I know there is heavy competition for the worst games journalist out there ever, and there's a lot of names that come to mind when you hear that phrase, but one person always seems to never miss Every time I see one of their articles come across my desk, I just can't help but read it for comedy relief. What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Smash JT. Zarmina Khan is in the news once again with her latest article doing full damage control on Dragon Age The Veil Guard, trying to talk about how, once again, just like the previous coverage I had on her, blaming the gamers for daring to question Ghost of Yatai's sucker punch for hiring Erika E as the main protagonist, people aren't allowed to ask questions in her mind. Just consume and beg for the next product. Hit that subscribe, give me a like, and check out SmashJT.com for the full article breaking down Zarmina Khan's latest article defending Dragon Age The Veil Guard and how apparently this is a breakout success by all metrics if you just ignore... The metrics. Zarmina Khan is back in the spotlight for another article from PlayStation Lifestyle, this time defending Dragon Age The Veil Guard with an interesting angle. If her name sounds familiar, it's because I recently covered her and her spirited defense of Ghost of Yatai and her attempt in painting Erika Ishii as a saint, while also in the same breath slandering countless gamers for daring to question the authority of Sucker Punch and having a female protagonist because God forbid people get what they wanted, a follow-up to Jin Sakai in one of the most masterpiece games ever created. No, just consume product. Her articles always seem to lack any kind of honest balance, always favoring the agenda-driven narratives with no attention paid to factual integrity. Her background includes work for the British government prior to joining on with PlayStation Lifestyle and has plenty of questions regarding activism in her background. And if you want a full-on deep dive in the information I found on that, I'm not going to rehash all of it. You can check out the previous video if you missed it. I'll put it above me right now. But for now... Let's dive into this article from Dragon Age The Veil Guard and why the game is just a hit. And if you're not buying it, you're just a you're just an angry chud. You're a hater. You're a troll. Khan has decided to take it upon herself to take on the role as Bioware's champion, arguing that the company is right to block so-called trolls from criticizing the game. Ironically, this is the same person that writes for PlayStation Lifestyle who posted the article on Twitter and block replies, so I guess it lines up. Zarmina's latest article, titled Dragon Age the Veilguard Off to a Good Start Amid Troll Attacks, frames Veilguard's launch as some kind of triumphant moment for Bioware, claiming that the game is experiencing strong sales, despite supposed grifters attempting to harm the clear success of the game. And in her article, she specifically highlights that right-wing voices have criticized the game. She automatically dismisses any substantive complaints from gamers whom she disparages as the usual grifters, framing them as ideologically motivated attackers rather than, I don't know, concerned customers that might have fallen in love with the series and were looking forward to this game for nearly a decade. No, no, no. You're just a grifter if you have any questions about it. Now, Khan does acknowledge that Vilgard's concurrent player count is lower than that of other recent releases, like the big daddy of games this year, Black Myth Wukong, but she quickly brushes away those pesky facts with the amusing defensive comment, Concurrent players mean the number of people playing a game at the same time. It's not a sales number. Well, yeah, true, but it's the same for all games. Like, it's an indicator. That's why people look at it, because it's an important indicator that has a direct correlation to the amount of people who have purchased said product. She even went on to Twitter continuing with this line of thought. Hey, worthless chuds, concurrent players is not the number of copies sold on a platform, LMAO. All it means is the amount of people playing at the same time. You guys are so stupid, it's mind-blowing. Hashtag Dragon Age Veilguard will remain rent-free in your empty heads. It's like that meme of Homer Simpson with the cigar laying down on the couch. Everyone is stupid except me. I mean, just the way she started off the article, Dragon Age The Veil Guard sales are looking strong, despite a concerted effort by the usual grifters to hurt its sales. Which, I gotta stop right there and say, 
If you think YouTubers being honest with an audience is grifting to hurt sales, that says a lot more about your integrity than anything else. The discourse surrounding the game even attracted the attention of influential right-wing personalities, but that didn't stop it from becoming one of publisher Electronic Arts' biggest single-player launches. Um, source? Please, I would love to see some information backing this up because all we have right now is Steam Charts, which does not tell us anything about the actual launch itself. She goes on to state, Veilguard currently holds a Metacritic average of 84 out of 100 on PlayStation 5. Looking at legitimate reviews, critics seem a bit split on the title, especially its pacing. That said, a score of 84 out of 100 is pretty solid overall. After the disastrous launch of Anthem in 2019, BioWare has certainly redeemed itself with Dragon Age The Veilguard, which, sure, if you ignore those pesky facts get in the way of how BioWare was seemingly hand-selecting people to review this game to make sure they got the highest Metacritic score possible before release, yeah, I guess you could say, just looking at it for what it is, it's a great game and everyone should love it. There's no problems here. And all this goes back to the whole journalist, and I use that term very lightly because they're activists posing as journalists. They're all the same thing. At the end of the day, the more I dive into this, it's the exception, not the rule, to find somebody who actually writes and talks about gaming professionally in the industry that doesn't have an angle that is anti-gamer. And it's got to make you wonder, why is that? Why are you in an industry where you hate your customer? You are in the wrong line of work. Zarmina loves to rage against and hate on actual gamers on her Twitter account almost daily. If she hates gamers so much, why is she doing this? It's because they want power. And this is a way to manipulate people and control them. And they are a addicted to it. But here's the funniest thing about it. When I go through the article, if I didn't already know her background from covering her previously, I'd assume that all of her articles are satire. Her unwavering alignment with corporate interests and her constant sweeping dismissals of dissenting voices continues to create articles that are both infuriating and honestly beyond entertaining in their lack of self-awareness. If you read through her article like any normal person would, you'd be like, is this like the Babylonian Bee or, or the Onion? Like, who would write this and be serious? It's so unbelievably, utterly ridiculous to take the standpoint that she does, to be gargling the corporate nuts and just asking for more every time she talks. You gotta go back to the origins of what's happening right now with the whole Gamergate situation and access media and how these people can't be honest with their audience because they're so afraid to piss off their corporate overlords and lose the access that is the only thing they have that is keeping them in the position that they're in right now. And it's exactly why every single YouTuber covering gaming right now is completely eating their lunches. And she wants to compare Dragon Age to games, but she doesn't dare mention any because it would instantly invalidate any kind of argument that she's trying to make here. The Steam charts currently, as of recording this, the all-time peak in the first close to 24 hours of the game being out has about 75,000 concurrent players on Steam playing it, which is fine. Like, that's a respectable number for, I don't know, a game that has a name, has been in development for a few years, and they're looking to make some numbers and some money off it. Great. Dragon Age of Veilguard has been in development, botched, scratched, restarted from scratch, and it's been in work for nearly eight plus years or so. The 75,000 concurrent players at launch pales in comparison to what EA needed this to be in order to come even close to making up for the losses they've had putting into the game being created in the first place. And a lot of people were trying to initially say, oh, it's Halloween, you know, people are out trick-or-treating and doing Halloween parties. They're not actually sitting home playing video games. And then you see, oh, wait, no, Monster Hunter Wilds beta came out the same day and completely blew it out of the water, approaching nearly half a million concurrent players at one time. And it's just a beta. Or you could even reference what Peaky Boo said on Twitter. Smash JT, can you make sure to mention all the Twitter brigade who are telling us it's breaking all the charts? 
thanks, and included a screenshot of Dragon's Dogma all-time peak of 228,000 players compared to Dragon Age the Veilguard, which is, like I said at this point, around 75,000. So we're looking at less than a third of what Dragon's Dogma got. This is paltry in comparison. So no, this is not a win for Dragon Age by any stretch. Why would she ignore that? Curious. It's almost like she doesn't want the facts getting away of a good story. And not to completely lose the focus on Zarmina here, but just to prove how these quote-unquote gaming journalists all think and love corporate so much, Alyssa Mercante was on Twitter stating, Wait, are people really comparing a free games player base to a full price one? And they're totally different kinds of games? Does reality exist anymore? I want to be Delulu for a day. I think it would be freeing. To which I'd tell Alyssa, bless her heart, no one told her about the Concord beta. Because what these activists love to try to do and constantly fail at is twisting numbers into aligning a story and a picture they want to present to the end user. And they use words and numbers to create that portrait, no matter what it takes. And as we're seeing in real time, their stories are completely melting because while they might be using facts to try to back up their story, they're actively leaving out other important aspects that tell the full story to let the customers know exactly what's happening. Which again goes back to, that's why we're eating their lunch. Anyways, keep up the great work, Zarmina. I always look forward to reading your articles just to have something to brighten my day and laugh at because you are terrible at your job. Anyways, I'm going to leave it there. If you guys want more information, check out smashjt.com for the full article. I will link it in the description below. If you appreciate what I'm doing, hit that join button. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, you stay smashing. Thank you. So, I'm non-binary. <laughs> what does that mean? It means I don't feel like a man or a woman. <laughs> if you are neither a man nor a woman, then what are you? Non-binary. I just said, and I'm going to use they instead of she from now on. <laughs> <laughs>